We moved to the country when I was 10 years old and my siblings were four, six, and eight. We absolutely love the open spaces growing yeah. up here. Yeah, we were building all kinds of forts. Yeah, we were forts. always building forts. We built like a ship once. We used to all build forts together. I think that kind of, you know, the whole way that we were raised, that we really stayed on the farm a lot. We would do our school and we'd get that done and then we couldn't wait to get out and be creative and build something. That, I think that, that desire to build and create has just kind of stayed with all of us. As we got older, being the millennials we are, we eventually discovered uh, technology. And when we did, I think it was iPods, and that was it, we were sold. When we were creative as kids, I think that creativity hasn't gone away. It's kind of just gotten better. Our family has built a few earth bag buildings, so now it's time to put those skills to work once again. Build. Cheap buildings. Cheap build, build. <laughs> this is our biggest challenge so far. A recording studio underneath, and then there'll be a workshop on top. The price to build it, somewhere between five to 7,000. Which is a pretty good price for a building. These kind of buildings are really nice because it allows the whole family to work on the building. Let us take you on our adventure and show you how our family works together to build it. When we had Jeff out to dig the hole, we were really pre-planning to have the studio done at the same time. <laughs> it's really, really deep. Here, look at that. Now if we go this way, here's the, the ladder. I'm gonna get up here, and then I wanna show you. There, got the whole crater. We noticed that the walls were kinda starting to fall in a little bit, so we decided to lay that foundation layer. That would be, I would say, pretty close to the center. Just to ensure that it wouldn't get buried because it was going to be quite a few months before we would start building on it. We dug a trench all the way around the outside edges of where our walls are going to be. We're taking the uh, rock and we're putting it inside the foundation that we're going to be setting the walls on. We had originally planned to have a whole bunch of rock brought in so that we could stack the two walls on top of each other and like a two-story building would be. We kind of changed our mind a little bit. We're able to expand the top section so that we could encompass the stairwell. It's your high-tech level mechanism. We're using like two shovels and a string to level it all. It happens right there and you're good. Right here, Shay. I had gone through before and just kind of checked it and eyeballed it and I was like, oh, it's level. And then the guys came in and they're starting to level it and it's getting less and less level. And then they'd be like, oh, it needs to go up. And I was just like, no. We used some railroad ties for the entry and we just kind of buried them and then on the top we went ahead and cut a one shorter to put on the top. All right, All right. got to drill a bit, drill some holes in. And then we took rebar and we banged it into it to hold the thing together. And then that's going to go ahead and be the entry downstairs. It's going to be a little bit challenging to get this thing in the ground. It started, huh guys? Yeah, yeah it started. Bryson's got his new haircut. Um, he cooler. Cooler because I don't have all the hair on me, and I'm cooler because I look cooler. So. No comment over there, popsicle girl. So why didn't you bring one for all of us? We've been really needing a sound studio and an art studio, so I'm excited to have a place to work on my costumes and family to work with. When we get around 18 inches high with the bags, we lay the electric wire in boxes. Yeah, if you guys start like right here. So you yeah. yeah. Yeah, perfect. We're gonna go ahead and put plastic around our building. We got some plastic here to act as a moisture barrier between the bags and the dirt. Is it pretty thick plastic? Six mil. So we got it 10 foot high, 100 foot should easily reach around the whole building. So keep pushing it out of our way as we grow, backfilling, pushing it out of our way. You just want to make sure that you were involved in the mathematical calculation so that no, I you have no responsibility if it's wrong. <laughs> you just said uh huh to make me feel. And it's not I can only do math when it involves huh? my Sims money. <laughs> we are cutting off to the stairs. So is the stairs going to be inside or outside of the building itself? They're going to be inside. Inside? Okay. 
for um, sloping our steps down so that we can stair step them, cut them out as we go along and then we'll be building forms. Down here at the base, we have a four foot landing in front of the door that goes in. Where there are pockets of mostly sand, the walls cave in, but the clay like you see above doesn't budge. It collapses? What do we do? Get Lay underneath it. With your mouth open. Yeah. Your eyes wide open. And facing up. They teach you in like avalanche training and stuff. Go into the white smoke. It's like a wave, you know? You go underneath it. Bags here and uh, plastic separating the, the dirt from our bags. So that was a good burn, Bri. Totally. There's all kinds of geography. I mean, every place has deserts and every place has rainforests and living in a certain area requires a certain type of dwelling. Our geographical situation is far different than that that might be in the Pacific Northwest or Eastern uh, states like New York. And the makeup of our ground is totally different. The amount of rain we get, we're only looking at about a foot of rain compared to 25 inches or more in the Pacific Northwest. It's, it makes a big difference in what type of soil we get. So we had to take these in, things into consideration when we were building our underground studio out of the earth bags. One is how much water do we get? What type of soil do we have? It has a, a great deal of clay in it. It has a ton of caliche, which is a calcium. So we have kind of a hard soil, especially that first three feet of our soil. It, you get the pickaxe through that stuff to get down. And then there are pockets of sand here and there. The caliche level is like this first, uh, first three feet, you get a lot of rocks in our soil. There's a lot of uh, clay inside here too. So it's very hard, very, very hard. And that's just after a rain. It's time to strengthen the walls to ensure safety. First, we backfill. <laughs> We're just gonna like fill it up. It's awesome. Whoa! He's so good boy! Yeah! You know that oh, way? you gonna pull him out? Hi, Disa! He's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah! Okay, so we're gonna put in the dead men. This is to help the walls from caving in. It might be a little bit of overkill because of the way the bags compress on themselves, but better safe than sorry, and this really isn't that hard to do. So I think we're just gonna go like three foot in. And then put like another three foot chunk right there. And we're just gonna do one bag out, one bag over, Take a rebar through the two to hold the two together. Might even put a rebar in on this side. We're gonna do three. One here, we got another one over there, and then one more by the staircase. It's kind of interesting. We are about halfway up, and it feels like we're starting on ground level again because we've backfilled around it, and our uh, bagger is going to be able to stand on that, and so are we. So we had to say, well, how do we retain a circle inside of the ground? We have some forces at work. We have the force of gravity, which pulls straight down. So how we fix that is that our bags are stacked directly on top of each other, and we have them tamped so that they're solid. So you get the, you get the idea that if you can compact the soil, you're gonna return back to the caliche or to the solid packed ground, which doesn't move. We have used barbed wire to help with the shear strength. And three, just by it being a circle, it retains the same types of strength as an arch. You can actually have an arch hold itself together. Throw it on the side, any forces that come from the outside in equally press on the circle again because it all forces together similar to the arch theory. cool thing that this is, it's rained because it means all of our dirt we've been putting on the outside will settle nicely. That's why we put the plastic here. They're definitely solid. We keep going up, building those walls like a tube of toothpaste. I have always wanted to say that. Cleats are planted. 
place to secure the bags to the door frame. Two more. We need several hanger cleats installed around the building in order to hang green screen and other background items on the wall. Look, it looks like it looks like we're all standing on the same level. We are. But get on my level, son. Shay, you've yes. never stood on something this high. You're getting very good. Do I look tall to you. <laughs> I find that if I stay in the air conditioning all summer long, I don't really, the summer gets really super, super hot. So I find if I go get out and work in it and your body just seems to get used to it. So it's really important to get out early. You think it's really hot outside. It's not hot. It's just our brain telling us it's hot. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, I am. Wow, that's gonna keep the sun off. Like 25 bucks, I was like, I couldn't say no. I don't have so much time before he comes back. Here, have some dirt. Here, will you scoot that way? Look at that. It loves it's me. the simple things in life. <laughs> Bryson's always been a boy of wonder. We all wonder too. Guys, I got a speck of dirt on me. No, I'm not going to do that. No! What we're now calling the Muse Art Studio. Get it, because it's, it's going to be an art in the music studio. For our steps here, we're, we have a four foot opening going up. Our first actual going up is going to be right there. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah. Bryson, show us that some. Yeah. Okay. Good. And we want to have steps that are going to be about seven and a half inches high on the riser. And we're going to pour a 12 inch tread, but then we're going to lay the next step on an inch and a half. So we'll have a 10 and a half inch tread. We built one frame. So that allowed us to just use that same frame throughout the, the entire build. <laughs> Love it. All right, good. Let's try with this. It doesn't need to be too sturdy. It's these that need to be fairly sturdy, but I think we're okay. The steps were rectangular. However, they needed to go in a spiral going up, so you have one side that'll be a little smaller and the other side larger. So that's the first step there, huh? Yeah. This is the second. One step at a time. And then we tear the frame out and then set our next step and then put our next step in and then pull the frame out and keep using the same frame all the way up. So this overlaps onto the concrete an inch and a half. This is number one, two, three, four. Four, five, on step six. So you're just doing the steps and suddenly what the dog? Monday, was it you? Was it you, Monday? Was it Diesel? Who was it? Who was it? Who put their paw in this? Man, talk about feet print. I could put my foot in there. Uh -huh. You feeling pretty good today? 100%. 100%? So we went water skiing and the, the sun kissed us and then my muscles wouldn't work. I couldn't get myself to haul, and haul this big heavy bottom out of the water. And I couldn't move. You weren't the one skiing behind the boat. <laughs> See? Smart. 
Perfect. All right, we're done. We're done, we're done, we're done, we're done. See, done. Aaron begins planning the layout for the upstairs circle. We wanted our bigger circle to be centered in our smaller circle, and the center circle has the staircase, so we had to kind of account for that. So we moved the reference pole over and put a little extension on it so we could get higher. I got my pole in, and I'm just gonna draw it out. Then I'm gonna level it off, start laying the next layer of bags. Won't we? Yes, we will. highest point in the bags so that we can know where to put the top of the stairs um, actually in our circle. We counted for a six foot opening. Yeah. The two front posts there that you see are for French doors that are going to go in. It's a possibility of me putting a six foot slider in. This is the desert for you. One second it'll be like, hey, it's nice and sunny. And the next it says, now I'm going to pour rain on you. So, yeah. Here we're installing a, a berm around just the side of the building. Getting a little bit of pooling inside of our first layer. We need to be able to divert the water out of the foundation level. That's a common building problem, not just us, but any builder has to keep water out of their foundation. Anyway, we're gonna see how well this, this holds up. Hi, pig. But it has made our bags a little bit soggy on the outside, so we had to let them dry out. They get that wet all the way through like a real mud, or move them at all, and then they just turn into this real mush, and it can cause tons of problems all the way down. We don't touch the bags when they're that soaked. We just let them dry out naturally. I'm not playing. I'm sidetracking the dog so mom can video. Oh. So therefore, I am a key piece of instrumental work. Sure. Rather than an adornment. I don't even know what that is. What? So like a Don't decoration? Yeah, rather than <laughs> decoration. We put in about an hour a day, maybe a little bit more on the circle to try to get in a row a day. Uh, we'll work in the morning when it's not raining and then uh, cover the bags so that we get whatever afternoon rains come through. Uh, we won't soak our bags so bad we won't be able to work the next day. how fast it really goes when you just do one one row a day that thing will be up in no time the walls continue to grow nice whiny wheel thank you you see who's a squeaky wheel in this family the guys begin to prepare for the electrical outlets we installed the electrical boxes like you would a cleat. We just nailed the boxes right to the plywood. The duplex boxes we're using um, have nails on the box themselves. So it's like nailing it to a stud. So. She should be out here learning electrical. I have to rewire her house. You never know, Brian. Okay, so the question is, I have one more outlet. Where would you want it? Three across that edge, rock stove, one right there. I think it looks perfect. Okay. We just run the wire in between the bags and make sure they're separated from the barbed wire so we don't get any shorting going on. Inside or outside? Outside wire, inside barbed wire. It's easier than trying to pin it to the wall later and cob over it. Subscribe if you want to see more U nails. What's that oh, one now, Gare? Your light switch that you said we needed. Because you were right when you needed one. What's up with you being right today, Mom? Okay. When the kids get a room, they get a dog. Mm -hmm. And Bryson hasn't gotten his yet. When we finished his room, I don't know, a couple months back. I think he just wanted to kind of settle in. When the kids get up in their teenage years, you know, you no longer really, like when they're little, you hug them and you, and you cuddle with them. But as they get older, you know, you just don't do it anymore. Kind of That's tough when dad lays a big kiss on me. <laughs> so we like them to have an animal when they get up in that age because 
then it just gives them something that they can they can cuddle with and love on. I was thinking more like a teacup poodle. For Bryson? Yeah. Get a poodle. You want to get a poodle? Poodle, yeah. A poodle shaved all the way down to the, the skin with just its tail. They <laughs> make, they make, God makes those. They're just called hairless poodles. <laughs> exactly. And you wouldn't have to shave it. You get a great Dane so it can tackle diesel. Well, I, I've thought about that. I think you should get a not so great Dane. Real small. I want a really hairy dog that doesn't shed or bark or eat or poop. I think you're talking about a statue. How about cuddly toys? Like a plushy toy? They could cuddle that. It's now window level. Got the uh, window wraps. We got game late. Watch your toes. This particular room had larger windows. We went with a three foot by five foot windows. And then dad's nailing these braces in to keep them square so that you don't have a window that's like. like. On Bryce's building, we used two by 12s. On Bree and Garen's building, we used two by 10s. So I went back to the two by 10s. The cost isn't as much. Uh, to be honest with you, I eyeballed too much. You just this wait My dad and Garen plan out all the windows. Garen's bothered by that window right there. Dad likes the symmetrical, and Garen's all like, that view looks, no, we can't do that. <laughs> Diesel, are you picking the beans over there? Are you eating them? Huh? Yeah. These are tent poles, and uh, we're gonna use these to reinforce the walls between the windows, like we've done in the past. A little bit of movement on this wall. Because of all the rains we've had lately. Come over here, let me get a shot of this, you can see. We're out of plumb. The best way to fix these things is just to rinse them off. I was hoping to avoid it, but that's what we're going to We use the pole and the pole, and we run our circle around. That way we get our perfect circle that we want. As I take the rope, pull it tight. In this case, I'm just using a knot as my marker. And I just run it around, do that, mark that all the way around the building before I tamp it. And then we just follow that all the way up the building and then our walls are relatively straight. Um. There was only half a brick. <laughs> it rained like a lot. I and mean, we had a giant storm come through. It gets the bags wet. And, and it blows off our tarp. Yeah, that yeah. Used when we have it. such a bad storm, they'll get wet lower down too. So everything will be soaked. Alrighty. So I think we should go down and take a look at the underneath here. Well, it seems like it actually is holding up really well. I mean, I don't see any like bulging, collapsing anywhere, which is good. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, you can see water is pooled down here, definitely. We've had a lot of rain. Yeah, it seems to be holding up really nice, actually. As solid as ever. Hey, look, a little mesquite tree. Look at that. Hey, you know, if we wait long enough, it can be the center post. <laughs> After weeks of dodging rainstorms, we finally get a reprieve. We quickly jump into work to reach the top of the window boxes with bags. Don't tell me what I know, Travis. What was it? What was it he got wrong? One of the ways to help reach our goal sooner is to cut the top of the window boxes off. We wanted to go ahead and shorten the walls to accommodate the roof a little better. We decided to go ahead and just drop them down one foot and that brings the whole roof down one foot. The wall height was just getting too high after we add everything on top of the windows and everything. I mean, this is gonna be a skyscraper before we can get the roof on. 
No, this building, I just really wanted to do a lot of bottles. When you put them together, I don't want them to stick out too far beyond the bags because then you have cob around and they stick out. So it's trying to stay real close to the same width. So what do you think, right, right there? Yeah. With bottles, you can't just run barb over them and just camp over them like normal because all the weight when it starts building up will eventually break that bottle. So you have to like you put the bottle in and back up to it and then do a thin layer like over the top of it. And then when you tamp, you only tamp up to it and don't tamp on top of it until at least you get the next layer on. Beer bottles. <laughs> Beer bottles. <laughs> I like this little art. When we first started the design process for this and everything, um, Dad really wanted to put it in buttresses. We talked him out of it because we don't like the look. Well, buttresses, because we didn't put the buttresses in, it is possible that we had more problems than we really um, no, normally have had. You lay too many layers too fast and they Bro, never get a chance to dry and harden. Yeah, it's like a, a bag that can move. Even, even with it just being damp, once it gets hardened, that thing is rock solid. A 30 foot circle on a 14 inch bag is absolute max that you'd ever want to do. Yeah. It really is. We didn't really know that going in. We didn't really think that, that far. We didn't even think it would matter mm -hmm. really because we've had such good luck with the smaller circles. Mm -hmm. And then once we got up to a certain height, we had we had, had some issues with uh, just setting the walls and our center line got a little shorter at one point and it brought the walls in and out and normally that would be okay. But then we had a big rain come through, it soaked the bags all the way through down to the bottom one, caused a lot of weakening to happen and then it started to buckle. I mean if we would have put buttresses in, we wouldn't have had these problems. It, it was. It was the worst place for something like this to happen, but it did, right there. We noticed it was definitely moving. So we're going to try to fix it. We decided to use come along. So we we're at the base of the door downstairs. We we're able to connect the, the come along at the base, run a cable all the way up to the wall. We we're able to run the cable through. We put a backing on the back of that, back and around, out to the come along, and then use the come along to bring the wall in. That is already a, a ton better. If you just look at this line, I'd go some more. Wow. It, needs to be, it needs to be pushed in, and I'm thinking we could tamp it. And we'd move it over and then tamp it down. So this isn't going anywhere because like it's got this, you know? Yeah, it's really working good. Can I come out here and look at this? We are at 102 and a half, 103. So we're moving a lot. The dirt on the center bags here, since we had that big rain, all the dirt is still damp, hasn't dried yet. So it's going to re resettle really nice. If it was all dry, the wall would get weaker. This S turn kind of thing we had going on, we were able to kind of straighten it out. When we were doing this, our, one of our links in the wire we were using ended up popping, which I guess you kind of always expect to or you you're kind of always afraid of it so you're kind of always careful around it but uh it actually happened this time yeah it come out about six or eight inches didn't it at it least like, yeah it was, ooh, that's it was really it, the come alongs worked really good to pull the wall back to where we wanted it um, i think what it was is a spring effect where we yeah. had pulled it in when it busted it just like whoa all as yeah. far as it could go instead of just coming back to normal so it went a little bit past, we brought it back in. It's just unforeseen, you can't always, sometimes things break. It's actually a pretty good testament to what the bags, how sturdy they really are. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be able to spring back like that and hang out just at a crazy angle and just stop. Yeah. I mean, that's, it really is quite amazing. Dad's first thing was he just wanted to tamp it. And I was like, no, 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 you can't just tamp a giant section. It just does not work. And then he left to go over and I was out of ideas. And so I was like, okay, dad's gone. We can test the tamp now. Okay. It looks better. It does. Fixed it. Alright, don't tell dad how we did it. And uh, it actually did end up working. A little. Was that, was that hard to admit? Oh, yes. Okay. Look. look at that wall. Look at that wall. What a beautiful Zach. Better than it was. So, so we managed good. to get it back in, get everything all put yeah. back together. We're digging some holes to put some posts 
here to hold up our Murphy bed. So that worked really well. We not only get now posts for the Murphy bed, but we also get posts for the wall. It's gonna help to support it. Hey, didn't move at all. It's good. I've been thinking about some different types of roofs. Uh, this reciprocal roof thing kind of came up. We needed to build a reciprocal roof as kind of an example. Uh, a reference. The guys bisect the circle, draw a line, and create eight equal segments. Well, you went slow all the way across. Okay, okay how do we bisect? I could have drawn six circles. I'll show you how it's done. What do you call that? Boom. Inspection. I don't see Look at that line. A little better. <laughs> so we were signaling outer space, weren't we? Our symbol's in the ground. Maybe land here land so here. you can take us with you. Yeah. yeah. I think this will work pretty good. Dad is using an excellent method of attachment. All right, there it is. And uh, it was strong enough that one of us got up there and stood on it's it. Very so it's very cool. Break it. Gosh, that is amazing, guys. <laughs> we went down, purchased all of our wood. We got our great big 30 footers, 30 foot two by eights. Just eight of them. Pieces of I wonder what kind of trees they had to chop down to get those wood. At least like 30 fun. feet. Everything look good? So what is this? Dan, you sure you got these right? Okay. That one goes like that. This one goes like... Let's see. And this one goes like... Hang on. Hang on. Hang on, I'll get it figured out. I thought I was gonna just keep doing this over and over and over and it would work. It would work if we were doing that. Well, what? We can create a monster. I need. We have created a masterpiece. This is not going in the video. It's going in the video. We are the champions. Ah. You better not miss How many it. hands does it take leg. to put this thing in? The world's heaviest hula hoop. I think we got it figured out now. So all we've been doing today is just building sketchy scaffolding. It'll work. The scaffolding looked like this crazy mechanism that was holed up by one post. No, I had four posts. Looked like it was one. It was scarier fun. than heck, but it was fun. Nah, it wasn't scary. Right, I need uh, two by four. Oh, our flailing system. Fine. That's like your wish you're up here. Back one more. That's it. Five. Yes. At the intersection. Yes. There. Ah. Fall. And then on top of that, they decided to put a ladder on top of all that. Well, we couldn't quite get high enough. Scaffolding only reached so far, so we had to be up on top it's of like that. What? It's like what? It's probably like 25, 25, 25, 25 yeah. 30. You're at the best view to see if this is level. Can you what? can you stand up to see it? if that top of that's level? You feel comfortable? There we go. See where we're at, people. Push, push, push. Um, he's on that edge, and it's just, if he does, it just takes one step back. There's like nothing, nothing to catch him, so I'm... It's so scary. It, it is scary. They're, they're very brave. And they're doing a great job. It's just, look at that. It's so stressful. Just watching them stay out here. Full levels. It's not a great deal.
Yeah, it's staying up. Hey, we got this thing up in the air, and thanks to uh, Sam and Garen and Bryson, we uh, got all our rafters up in the air, and um, everything's looking real good. Ready to go. With the rafters placed, it's time to get leveling. We're about four foot across there. Well, actually, that one is our highest one, so it makes sense. And then we're just gonna go around and level and nail off all the rafters so that the roof is, is level. Someone chewed up our line level. Yeah, right so. Does this look familiar? Does that look familiar? So that's your new line level right there? Yeah. It's our new line level, it's uh, top of the line. Pine top intended. of the line. <laughs> look at that beauty. It's so big. For the heart of seeing. Heart of seeing, that's the wrong word. Truly really impaired, it. it's bold. That way dad can see it. Oh, this was the spot in the bag where the rain, it got it so wet that it was oozing out of the bag. And now it's like, completely solid. down here and you're looking up there you're seeing this beautiful little wonderful curve that comes up here I'll go show you how they work uh, oh, sorry bro. there's gonna be boards that are gonna come down here and out and what these do is they set up here like this to support the boards that's going to come out. We're putting in jack rafters that fill in between the rafters. And that helps with the support? Yeah. Some guy named Jack did it. We don't know why. But they named him Jack. We named the monkey Jack. We named him. 34, you want to do the other ones now? And I'll get this first 34 for you. Is that inside or out? Uh, it's inside. I got it. You know, what's really cool is to have Garen up there taking measurements and laying out and doing all that and then just hollering down measurements to me to cut. Now he's gonna be able to do it on his own. Over a little more, quarter of an inch. Whoa, back. The guys begin installing the fascia. The face of the roof. We built the fascia in kind of a zigzag pattern, so which is the same width and dimensions of the rafters themselves. So uh, it was kind of nice to be able to build it in that way. I know some folks will save money with uh, using smaller materials, but I kind of like to match the tails with the with the fascia material. We are always really happy when we get to this point in the bagging. So we we're on the last bay section, and then we're like, we're done for good, and then it's just what? cobbing yep. and roofs. We're done. Wait, yup. This is victory, my brother. <laughs> victory. We have won the battle, but not the war. Die! Kids, they think they're done bagging, but there's actually a little bit more that we're gonna have to do, but um, they're feeling pretty good about life, so I'm not gonna say anything. We first found this whole idea of the reciprocal roof from uh, doing a little bit of research on the internet and I found this PDF on reciprocal roofs by a, a gentleman that's a designer or an engineer that's in Japan. And um, there was a, a lady, her name was Olga Popovic. She had done a, a great little review of that particular process and how that was all done. The name of it is called Reciprocal Frame Architecture in Japan and um, check it out on uh, Google. So I was very confident that this was a good process. We started cutting roof and designing it just like it was done in Japan. And the idea too is that we have compression rings at the top and a compression ring at the bottom. It's very similar to a yurt or a teepee even for that matter. You have a compression ring at the top where you rope around the teepee poles. I'm very happy with the results and I've been building roofs for a long time and very fun. Fits the circle just perfect.
wants to reinforce the frame with a cable system similar to a yurt. He heads to our metal junk pile to look for needed parts. Pull the pipe for this. It seems a little obvious, so here it is. Perfect. If we run the wire through there, it won't risk breaking eventually. Okay. Now, to make it pretty, do you think we have to cut the other side well, off? Well, I don't think it needs to look pretty. We're not seeing it, right? Yeah, this shows. I say we do the four bend and clean them. I didn't realize we were. You still can do the four bend in there, right? Deburring. Oh. Are you cold? <laughs> yeah, I am cold. It's colder out here. But I'm still in shorts. Freezing out here. It's not supposed to be cold. Darren's not in shorts. But you always wear the bright one. Bright one what? The smart, smart one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go over my work. I'm not looking at it. Yeah, great. right. We have enough in here. Perfectionist. Yes, we have enough. You're not going to see it from no, 20 feet in the air. Just bring the pair of pliers. And your cable thing you wanted to do? So what is your plan with these? Is to put these in here. And just, yeah, maybe against the wall so it's all looks the same. Yeah. And then just drill a oh, hole right there. Slamming this through. Run our cable. We only have eight to do. It shouldn't take that long. Does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Oh, right there. There we go. That's one. The cable that we're installing now is something similar to a compression ring which holds all the bottoms of the rafters in. Um, it's kind of an extra measure of, um, you know, I'm, I haven't built one of these before, so I'm kind of going with something a little extra at the bottom. It's like a yurt. The cable is gonna be below the ceiling level. So we do get this opportunity to tighten it and use it as a hang banners or something from it. It'll be fun. Whoa. That's all I need. It's nice. That's the insurance right there, baby. We went down to get our uh, plywood for the roofing sections, but then I usually typically like to buy the plywood, but the Wood has become so much more expensive that I went with the OSB. It should be eight feet. It's not, it's a little too long though. It's happening. Hey. Yay. One bay complete. Oh, it's looking good. Coming together. This is the uh, top plate that the curb will set on. Dad made a seven-sided polygon. I'm gone like the wind. <laughs> you didn't measure the right distance. That? Well, let's what just pull this one and cut us out another one that's half inch longer. Um, three fails this morning. Well, third time's a charm, right? Yeah. Fourth time's a charm. Fourth? All right, Dad. That's perfect. You are a genius. We knew you had it in you, Dad. We always believed in you. Through the hole. Well, I missed it. We receive a surprising call from Susie, an Andorra representative offering us materials to use on our roof. Today, it arrives. Push! Nails. Nails. Wow. We're sure thankful that it gave us some product and um, we're all set. It's awesome. It's really awesome. I'm very excited. Very grateful these guys are willing to do this. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Car peeper time. Not yet. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. then we're gonna go ahead and tarp it. He's going up! He's going up! He's going up! He's not moving. Don't move. Uh oh, right up there. Oh, oh, oh. That's good enough. We can figure this out now. But we can change this. We can slide it up and down. Yeah, but if we start, we start here, putting up like the first bay, wall. kind of figuring out where we want everything, and how we want to start laying them out. Wind starts kicking up. It's looking like it's gonna rain. Is it there? Can you? Yeah. What is it? What is it? It's my width. Your width measurement now. If you could it. give me that. Is that okay? That Drop line. It. Okay, let me nail this so that I don't lose it. This is what we got to do: is sight these. Yeah, yeah go to the right at the top, just a touch. That's it right there. Uh, back a little bit. I'm, uh, there, that's it. That's perfect. At one point, it blew even some of our sheets off. Well, they're tough. Yeah, they are. Throw together the one bay that we got. As soon as possible, give okay, I'm, this I'm so going for it right now. Put things away and wait for wait till tomorrow to finish it up. Yep. Uh oh, injury. Uh, You're uh, supposed to hammer the nail, not your finger. So I'm actually the hammer. It's the oh. hammer's fault? Yeah, it's the hammer's fault. It's out of balance. Unbelievable. Sorry, Garen. Keep it's called training. Tools. Poor workman blames his tools, Garen. Our good friend Marvin came out to, uh, to help us out, and we're very excited to have him out here. He's quite the, quite the carpenter, too. So. You know, I've seen a lot of kids with saws and crews and stuff that I've run and it's amazing to watch these guys use these saws. They're so confident and they're using them properly, safely. Um, very impressed. So we're trying to figure out a solution for this skylight, and I think we might have found one. Nice, best idea so far. If at least. It's not mine. I think it's, no, I think it's Bryce's fault, regardless. No. <laughs> so now it's time to put the skylight on? I do believe so. The skylight's on, my friend. And that means our job is done. to start from the bottom up. They head inside and downstairs to start the soil cement floor. We set the grade by taking two bricks for our leveling and putting one in the center of the floor and at the seal of the door and then we leveled it from the seal to the middle of the room. That a positive thing. Take some dirt out. All right. We want to have the right grade, the right amount of dirt so that when we put it in the cement, everything gets mixed in there. We don't have to pull anything out. There he is. Fortunate to have our buddy Marvin come out and uh, help again. Our makeshift fit system to get the dirt out. So you want to help, but he is. Wait, I've joined the Marvin, Bryce, and Shea team. Yeah. Is he trying to pull with that tree? He's trying to pull. He's trying to help you. Okay. Diesel, pull on it. Go that way. Come on, Diesel. Oh, Good oh. boy, pull. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Did we turn this entire thing? I turned the whole thing by shovel first, and then you guys did the tilt. The young guy in the room, uh, Bryson, was able to like do twice as much work for us because, you know, we're seasoned carpenters, you know, and so we weren't as apt at a shovel as he was. 
So Poor but, workman blames his tools. I'm not blaming then. the shovel, I'm just blaming the bodies of the two old guys that you are working with. You didn't know you are coming over for this, did you, Marvin? No. Yeah. <laughs> There's something really enjoyable about that. So we use the water to actually dampen and keep the dust down at the same time. And then I got a chance to spray Bryson every now and then, which was fun. He only did it once, surprisingly. Yeah. I expected more. lived in the city you know we were putting the kids in activities which is great activities are great mm -hmm. but I think those moments that we spend working alongside each other are probably the most valuable moments mm -hmm. we have with them mm -hmm. yes it allows us to build that relationship with them mm -hmm. you know they get to see too how we handle problems and or how we don't handle problems very mm -hmm. well so they'll see some of our mistakes and they'll see that we're not as perfect as we think we are so it's it's humbling and it's enjoyable because you're sharing and the kids get something out of it. I get something out. I learn all the time. Yeah, you, you're a good leveler. I mean with dad, not kicking dad out, just helping. Feet rock. We get to see how our kids handle stressful situations. Shoot. What? The rock bent the time. Yeah. Um, handle situations when they're tired. Um, it just allows us these moments to intervene. Try this again. I'm almost done with my crop circle, dog. Yeah. Uh, we hit another rock? Yes. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> Call that done, eh? I have this thing up. You must be cold. <laughs> now we gotta focus on leveling it. And then we tamp it. Oh no! Tisa, you're gonna get me in trouble! Don't make any paw prints! Quick! Quick! We need to find and cut down some good tree limbs to replace the temporary post for the entryway of the studio. We're at the pile of potential posts. Oh, help me pull this out. Yeah, let me. Let me. Let me do it. Oh, wait, hold on. What do you think of these two, huh? This one? And that one? How fun. Dad makes plans to frame the floor. So I put my double to the 10 and then come out to about four feet and then cantilever back over the top of this. And so after the cleats are built, we're gonna take 20 foot two by tens and clap them together and then put them across the long distances, the longest part of the circle, and then we'll just shrink it down from there and just put singles. Bring it down here now. Bryson can practically Dad, can push you it. Nail that? I can just push it flat. Yeah, he's amazing. If you can nail that end, I can. Show him, Bry. Show him your strength. Got another brain, he can't defeat us, right, boy? Yeah. The one that's going to determine the height, yeah. I think it's going to be that one over there. The next one over, or oh, this one up here. Yeah. We're just not going to, we're going to put them in but not nail them, and then decide. There we go. We're there. Just basically lifted up the sides of the cleats so that we've got a nice level floor. Ooh. I think that's pretty dead on, exactly. Our goal is to finish the floor this week, so the guys continue installing the floor joists. Yeah, 
four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. When Bryson and Dad are filling in the sections on the floor, us gals are bagging in between the joists. We were asked if us girls use power tools. I use power tools. Plus, you can't stick up. It does, it means that there's a bump in the <laughs> that is a hack job. <laughs> the bags are like adobe bricks, but with nails in between them to secure the floor. I think I might have put too much in here. Both are in there. No. Diesel, what are you doing? Can you get out? Are you trapped? <laughs> There we go. <laughs> it's like doing stairs, but hang on, it's wrapped like three times around. You call yourself safe. <laughs> hang on. You <laughs> and that is why we don't show us using power tools. That was dumb. You didn't get that in the video, did you? No. Okay, because that, that was dumb. So, don't let them see that. We can do a couple of these anyway before it gets too dark. That one. All the way to the wall. Okay. We're gonna take these eight footers and we're gonna run them out over the top of the stairwell. Can we leave them out? You're going to party like a sniper. You're going to party. Now what are you going to do? selecting our posts now for our stair railing. Does this look like a great post? I mean, it has some memories too into it. It's from our tire swing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, kind of excited to do a mesquite stair rail. What's good about a post that's secure is if you can actually make it part of the floor. It bolts in basically so we can bolt it down. So what's cool about mesquite is that it's really twisty and it's all over fun. The place. It's not like plywood. Straight, <laughs> yeah. We bolted it right to the tuba tins. We're gonna run that at 38 inches on the post height, and maybe like 40 for the top section after we get the railing piece on and then bagged right up against it and then put some blocks in. So that makes really nice strong posts as opposed to just like attaching it with a bracket or something to the top of a deck. Now that the main stair posts are in, we're gonna head downstairs. Laying down some electrical? Yep, doing the uh, three-way switch. So we can turn the lights on and off upstairs and the fan too. Okay, so we are doing wall prep. Not a lot of prep though, right guys? Just a little bit. That's the big hole. Uh, what you're seeing is the aftermath. I was carrying this on my shoulder, and then right when it got right to my shoulder, it went like this. <laughs> okay, so the plan the guys are doing is mixing mud with pure light. One to one for right now. Kind of see how it turns out. We're gonna add some water probably, just a little bit. I wouldn't add. What do you think? Yeah. All right, should we go test it? Yeah. Okay, let's pour some in, Dad. Okay, wanna help me? 
we got to a peanut butter mixture. That was our first one. Then I went to pe and then I went to pancake batter. I wanted a little bit right. thinner. What do you think of that? Can it rise? Well, it, it's sure a texture. That that's soft. The damp and all. Yeah. That. More? I think okay, this is yours. I gotta go make more. Sound moves in a straight line until it hits something. And then the more times it hits something, it's the weaker the sound gets. Okay. So the idea was with the rolls of the bags, we get a little bit of deadening. It also too reflects off of the little pieces of pure light so that it bounces off something. So the more bouncing we can get in there really is the better. If I can get all kinds of different angles and soft materials, then that causes the sound to deaden. And that's what we're trying to get is a dead sound. You know what? It sounds good when you're standing in the middle like this. And when you move over here, it really does get quieter over here. Are we gonna paint this down here too? Yeah. Isn't this paralyte for gardening? Yes. Do a more water? Yeah. Ooh, I was hot. The test. Think pancake batter. No. No? I was thinking about something else. He was thinking of food. When I said pancake, <laughs> it was like, ooh, dinner time! Actually, I was thinking of that. <laughs> <laughs> So we have our, our fans, and we got our piping. The dog stuck his head in here, and it got jammed on his head. <laughs> this was kind of broken, and kind of hanging, flopping and stuff. And so we're trying to get it off, trying to get it off. Dad, get over here, I need your help. You need to run. He says, you need to but run. Hopefully we can salvage it and get some pipe out of it. And basically our fan hooks up to this piece. This pipe is supposed to stretch out to eight feet, but I got a few feet missing. <laughs> Diesel, you did not learn the first time. Do not stick your head in there. I think he might have enjoyed it. <laughs> like this. Okay, a couple more. I'm gonna put it in the rest of the air vent now. It's gonna be our drawer. So it's gonna draw air from down there and push it up to here. So yeah. So it's gotta go up like that high. If we can grab the lowest, coldest air down there, which is at the very, very bottom, right? And pull that up. So what we'll do is we'll just run a, that four inch by 12 inch pipe. They make this like this. And we'll just go right straight down alongside the wall. You always need good airflow down there. Yeah. So it also gives a good airflow. Yeah, and get fresh air. Shelly and I were just like traveling around one of the hardware stores and we bumped into this, architectural glass. We picked up a couple of these and we'll be installing them in the floor. Yeah, that's it. We gonna put it in? Can I? Yeah. Think that that can handle the weight of a person? Yeah, why don't you step on it, see? See? Easily. Thought my foot didn't go through. That would've been a disaster. Cool. This goes in here in the wall, collects light from the outside, but it all have to come through this hole. Um. Ah. some painting downstairs. <laughs> Hi buddy. It's kind of like a grayish. Like a, I like it. The plan today is to put in the cam lighting. Because you can you? do it. Can cam lighting to put the cam lights in. Oh yeah. For people like me, who make simple mistakes. Well, that's ridiculous. What it is. is. Ridiculous. Is that a head holder? Yeah. Oh, uh, Brian? Yeah? Where were you when I was putting mine in? You know, it doesn't matter to have that crooked. It does to me now. It doesn't matter to have it crooked, to okay. be honest.
If you think the guys were the only ones working, then we're gonna give you a sneak peek of a future video. Follow me. Whoa, are those little dragons? Yeah. This is a dragon rocket stove, which is built over the dirt foundation in the corner of the Muse Art Studio. We have a separate video that documents this build. We start the acoustic ceiling downstairs. We have some landscaping cloth here that will be running underneath the floor joists. And this will um, help keep the insulation that we're gonna wanna put between the rafters held into place. When we pull a ceiling tile down, we don't get a face full of, of insulation, so. Hello. Bryson, where are you? We need I'm you. Right here. Really? Because like we need your dad's already like I think he's almost done. So we ran to town and uh, got our uh, tongue and groove for our decking, and we got all of our insulation too. We're kind of like made out of jeans material and, and that kind of stuff, so it has better sound qualities. It has this grid system, and I didn't want to lose any ceiling, so we decided just to put it right up on the bottom of those rafters. Dad found a really, really interesting way of holding the acoustic tiles. Put it on your eighth. I thought it was spectacular. You could do it that way. <laughs> it already sounds like a recording studio. Last piece going up. All right, trim is done, and it's looking beautiful. We're gonna do this whole circle with this insulation because this is right above the sound studio, and this is supposed to have higher sound qualities because it's made out of recycled jeans and I guess recycled cotton and that kind of stuff. When you stick your hand in here and you're like brushing stuff out, it feels like you're heading something and all the hair is falling off of it. Ooh. Yeah. Ew! <laughs> what a picture of those paints. <laughs> we decided to put a mask on. The, I think we're moving at blazing speed. So all the dust was coming up. Don't you think, Shay? Oh it's, yeah, sure. It's, it's pretty dusty. There is actually a blower for this insulation, but we live too far from town to go right one and then have to go take it back. Too much driving. So we're doing it by hand. But it's cool. We got this. The guys jump in to help a little bit with the insulation. Everyone comes up with their own unique way of busting up that insulation. This is just our, our tool we've been using for sculpting and putting cob up, so a little trowel. And then I just kind of scratch at it. And it just gets, it's a lot faster than tools or really anything. So I think I found the very best way to break up the insulation. You can do like a half a bag at a time, you just put it in there, pinch off the top of your hand, you just slam it into the ground, it breaks the whole thing up in a couple hits, half a bag at a time. Think it's good? Yep. I We're falling apart too. ready to screw that one down. We're also using screws and we're going really close together. We're using a lot of screws. <laughs> and the floor feels really solid because of it. There's a big difference between putting a floor down in a square room where you're using square materials. And here we are trying to actually put a square peg in a round hole. And uh, so it did make for some interesting cuts. We had our <laughs> Uh, interesting things happening around and um, yeah, it was a lot of fun, actually, it was a lot of fun. We're gonna dance on this floor, my baby and me. This week, it's time for windows and doors. Boy, yeah, this is Bullet. He's my new dog. He's a good doggy. Oh, yes. It's interesting too with the back building, as you tamp 
the bags down and stuff, any frames you put in place, you just gotta make sure they're dead level mm -hmm. and either nail them or level them in as you go because as you put those bags in and tamp those bags down, your frames can shift around a little bit. There's a crack in it. And it's kind of double pain, so. Double pain because hey, we have to take it here in the back. Pain. Yeah, I was just gonna say pain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a pain, Rick. <laughs> Putting some trim around the windows. Easy peasy. Nail gun. Cut the size. We were out enjoying our cobbing session, singing oh, as usual. Singing, normal. As usual. Yeah. Laughing. Enjoying each other's company. Yeah. And then. Bryson joins us, and our wonderful little session turns into an argument about measurements. Like, you treated her like she didn't know anything. So I would respond. <laughs> what well, is that even? <laughs> you know, I know all sorts of measurements because I work in like, Probably you know, like thing, stuff. But... And I'm like, huh, ah, oh, oh, you, you know what go. a cubit it is? <laughs> oh, but I know what a cupid is. Do you know what a centimeter is? And I was like, no, Bryson, I don't know what a centimeter <laughs> is. But I, in the end, I won because he didn't know what a cubit was. That's Shay. I mean, she did not know what a cubit I was. I wanted us to move on to other things because, you know, I am I can ace a lot of things, but measurements aren't one of them. Okay, move over that way a little bit. Then. The doors are really sensitive things. You can get them a centimeter off and they're all shut. So it's like, they're really difficult to get right. Get one corner 90, the rest of it flies. On double it's doors, good. it's a little more complicated because you got six foot. Yeah. We want that to be even all the way around. You know, it looks really good. Our door is finished. Shuts and locks. It's done. Ah, that was good to finish it. Last week while we were working on the outside, my friend Esther came over and she was a big help and we were all just kind of singing songs. Esther, do you mind being in the video? No. I give you my consent to put my beautiful face on the screen. <laughs> Let's just say, men of his stature are in short supply. <laughs> You may want to lower your expectations. Recently, we've all really gotten into a movie on Netflix called Strike the Musical, and we've all been singing the songs, quoting the lines. Now he lives in Koala. Me and Brie were really happy when uh, Esther saw the show with us so that she gets all of our jokes now and understands our quoting. But you gotta get in this stall to get in. <laughs> What can I say? It almost grew. It's almost. a little weirder. Yeah, it's a little weirder. I don't even know what that is. I don't have time for these Olympics. You can count. We're done. And it was cold, right? You're gonna break. In the next three days, things are really gonna get serious. We do not have everything done that we would like to have done. So we've been really putting in an extra effort. We're gonna be bringing out a hopper that we used in my room for the cob, and we're gonna be putting stucco through it and stuccoing the walls with it. Yeah. It's a modified uh, mud hopper mm -hmm. for sheetrock, actually. It took the, the technique that worked the best for keeping the mud onto the wall is to actually yeah. use a method where we wet it down to almost a liquid. Bryson would throw his thumb over the top of the hopper hole, I guess, mm -hmm. and then when he's ready to release the air, he would just pull his thumb away. I think thicker or two coats, that's what I say. Yeah. I wanted it really wet, and Dad wanted it really dry. So like a slurry, Dad. Probably something like this, you're probably right. Wow. No. It pours out, but it sure goes on now. We were on both opposite ends of the field, and Bree comes in and says, why don't you guys just make an in-between batch? 
just do slightly thicker, okay? Just to ease both you and Dad. It'll be the happy medium, right? Okay, go get it. See what happens. I'm game for something new. I'd... Leave it up to her for the logic. Looks like water. Nice, huh? It is nice. Good? Yeah. Although I still think it should have been wetter. I need windshield wipers. Every once in a while, my dog would lose sight of me. And howling and howling. My dog is so attached to me. What? Get over here. Pull it. Pull it. I'm right here. What are you doing, buddy? You gotta do better at tracking, dude. I cannot go anywhere focus. without him howling for me yeah, if I lose him. Focus. Don't worry about it. I got it, huh? All right, 20 ounce box, Dad. Because I know you probably got a thousand. I get done covering the main coat of the building, and then I hear Dad, and he goes, I want to do another batch. Pretty tired. Oh. <laughs> you were pretty tired. I was not very happy at that, but I knew that we kind of had to do it, because, you know. We had a few spots we needed to, to yeah. fix up. Mom was watching me clean off the bottle and how the light would just like shine through and the room would get a smidgen bit lighter and it was really, it was really kind of cool. Before we start painting, we need to clean off some of the stucco. Shay has found the perfect tool. I get to sweep the eaves. Sounds productive, am I right? Ready? Go. The guys get out there and they paint a section uh, on the building and I'm just not liking the color. Part of winning is experimenting. Yeah, and a trip to the store real quick to pick up some more green, but we did find some. By the time I got done mixing all of this paint up and getting this, this new color for Shelly, price is gone. It's computer problems oh, and... Yeah. Bree's computer crashed and that's kind of an important computer for all of us and uh, with our live streams and with her yeah. own work. So Bryson's in there doing some first aid on, on her computer. And I'm left to paint this thing by myself. If you've painted the eaves of a home before, it's like totally frustrating. And having an air sprayer like in your hand doing the eaves is the coolest thing. I feel really bad because Gary, he's, he's trying to accommodate the fact that I didn't like the color, but I'm still not liking it. First, I'm thinking, well, maybe when Gary takes that plastic down, I'll actually like it, but it's just not happening. I look out there and I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I like it, I like it. And then as the day goes on, I, 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 I just, I don't know what to say. It has to be right. If you're not gonna like the color, you're not gonna like looking out there. It's a pretty color. I just don't think it fits into our desert scheme um, because it, it looks to me like it, it belongs on the beach somewhere, Aqua you know? Blue or yeah, like, like in the that. ocean, yeah, there's a lot of blue surfing. In that color. Yeah. I start looking into other ways to change the color. Sponging, ragging, rolling, anything. I'm searching online. I just when it comes to the outside, mom's the final decision. We're gonna go with the dark green, and then Bree's gonna put the little bit of white over it to give it a little. I think I'm gonna like this a little more. It's kind of toned that down a little bit, so I'm really hoping I'm gonna like this. The trim color too. It's gonna be really fun. It already. I think it looks like chocolate mint ice cream. Ooh, I like the way you think. I really like this look too. I think it, it adds to kind of the organic and creativity of, of these um, shapes and textures. And it hides a lot of the blum bumps and blemishes in these buildings. I'm liking it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought you had your headsets on. I thought I was safe to say that out loud. What have you done? Um, that was this. It's between my toes. Ooh. Oh, that's that's not comfortable. <laughs> that was a wow. That was magical. 
I think I'm finally really happy with the color. It actually looks kind of, it looks more deserty. It, mm -hmm. it, it has that little texture. Granite, marble type of texturing, yeah. Yeah, and it's hidden a lot of the blemishes. I like that too. Mm -hmm. So. If you look at it with your eyes closed, yeah. it disappears. That's true. That's probably what I should have done before and we wouldn't have had to do the ragging. <laughs> the family heads back inside to work on the stair rail. We decide to debark the stair posts. What are you doing? What are look you away! Doing? It's not flattering. Let me uh, make myself look better here. <laughs> Yo, it just chips off the old block. <laughs> I got this tool, which is the good tool, if we're honest. You know, Shay, I really actually have quite an advantage with this tool. Oh yeah? yeah. Optimism? Shay, are you shaving? <laughs> I don't personally think that Bree should be able to film anymore because all she can do when she comes over to film us is pun after pun. <laughs> we need to get out of here. Like now. <laughs> A bigger bark than a spite. <laughs> You're not welcome in the workspace anymore. Oh, did you get some? Yeah, he's be barking that little piece right there. Hand railing that I'll be putting around here. You can imagine that you have this curve and you have pieces that are really curved. I mean, they're the pieces of uh, mesquite are are twisted and turned and so on. So it's a puzzle to be able to put them all together in a railing like this, so that was a lot of fun. I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do when I put the railings together is to just go ahead and overlap them and then run a bolt right through the middle and down into the post. This is so beautiful, Dad. <laughs> This giggly person here is my friend. She's gonna help us with the work today. Hi! She actually volunteered. Yeah, I've got brown chicken pox! <laughs> so much easier and more fun to work with a friend because you can sing. Hey, I can sing. Welcome. And I hope to come back uh, during the summer and help you guys build more. Yay! Right. Awesome. Free labor. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for your help. Too. I left the door open. What have we done? Nothing. Nothing at all. Are you going know, to do a lot of those little ones then? Yeah, they're supposed to be designed for like kids so they don't stick their heads through and stuff, you know? So you put them real close together. But I figured if we leave the hey. stickers on, the kids won't even touch them. True. Good one, Dad. Good thinking. That's an ocotillo. I don't even recognize it. So that's pretty good wood down there. So just get them down to that white wood and all this uh, stuff oh, off what? and you're ready to go. I use my uh, draw knife. Have you used the Yes. See the top on it? Yeah. So that you have a slack. So actually the distance between the bottom of that hole and the top of this hole is greater. So that you can just push it in on the top, slide it in, and pull it down, and put a nail right there. So what's the determination of how far apart these are? I just don't want diesel to be able to fit through. Diesel. Diesel proof. Looks like it's gonna work. Yeah. Yeah. Good boy. We have this section beside the stairwell that goes on down that's on the left hand side that it's unused space. Perfect spot to put cabinets. storage, yeah, cabinets yeah. and fill that up with as many cabinets as we could afford. And just for one cabinet is a little over a hundred dollars. Mm. See if we could find some used ones. I find this deal of these, uh, looks like a lot of cabinets. I went to go look at them and really 
to our shock, they didn't come out of a kitchen. No, they didn't. They were all custom cabinets. Oh, thanks, Dad. I don't know we could have handled that one. Yeah, that's pretty big, I know. Very nicely made, very strong. Maybe even better than what I could have put together. No. No? Never. Okay. I just, they were really good. <laughs> when Gary and I were going in to purchase them, we'll try to get them for $75. Oh, this is gonna save us a ton of work. But when we got there, I, I looked over at Gary and I'm like, I'm not gonna offer. No, don't offer any less. It was too embarrassing. It was, it was so much cabinets yeah, for it, it was, was already so nice. such a good and deal. And the guy was just great too. So yeah, he was better. a wonderful man. Wow, and they're really nice too. Yeah, they're very well built. If you shut. I can three dragon cool. heads for him. That would be cool. That would be cool. Took two trips because yeah. one of the cat, one of them was just fill up the whole bed yeah. in the back. Every time you can close something down behind closed doors, you're the place. You Can't see it from my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just always do yeah. the thing. <laughs> We're just putting a white base coat on, and then we'll go back through and antique it. It'll look totally different. You're so vain. Oh. He's like, what is going on? Chase painted this all white now. So it's really cool. Keep antiquing. What's the word on the cracks, Mom? Well, you can see now they are actually coming through. We were worried they weren't going to come through, and that was one of the things we wanted. It's the coolest color. It does have a lot of texture, that's for sure. Yeah, it totally, it totally matches the fun kind of shape and theme that we have going on in here. So, I love this uh, idea here. It's, it's kind of a leathery stone look or cave wall look. I just love this. Dark spots, light spots, it has a lot of texture to it. The cracks lead credence to some kind of brick or something. It's nice, I like this. The guys get started installing the cabinets. That was scary cool. We decided to go with the two long 53s by 42, I think they are. We uh, put two of those together and then a taller one that is uh, 80 inches by 32. And we drilled holes and we put bolts through the connecting pieces at the, because uh, it's a round wall and square cabinets. So wherever they connected, we stuck a bolt in there. Right. Now that I have the arrangement, we'll just go ahead and take the cabinet doors off. So I'm going to sand everything down and we're going to match the stain that we're going to use for the railing. One coat of red oak. Gary's idea is to do just a long streak. So we just do one long streak. How are you sanding that? Are you on I the edge? Scaffold. Oh, did I dare look? Yeah, look. And then if I get bored, kind of... Gary stop. <laughs> well, I'm wearing safety gear. What? Um, I have uh, shoes on. Those two you just put in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Three and one? Five eight? Three and Something we hid from you last year. We didn't show it because it was a secret. And now it's not secret anymore. Hey, will I fit in there? Yeah. Don't fall down to the third floor. <laughs> in those old movies when they open up the shutters and they start yelling or something. <laughs> She's very organized the way she sweeps each step. Don't judge me. Again, I love the way you sweep. I'm so sweet. 
At least I am cleaning. Yes, it's true, you are working. You have a very sweeping personality. Getting ready to have a Rooney, my strategically placed bucket. If we have empty space under the stairs, we could name that like Harry Potter's room. Well, it looks like something from Hogwarts. We're trying to get our uh, railing in for our stairwell. How's it going, Dad? Hey, it's going great. Oh, hi, Bree, with camera. What's up? <laughs> A year from now, you'll wish you started today. You don't know who said it? <laughs> the handrail right here so this is nice and secure this is secure and that'll be secure down there dad and Garen begin planning for the Murphy bed yeah. and I'm um, just started watching looking drawing this whole section here is gonna be right in here. And then we kind of just spent a couple hours figuring out exactly what we wanted to do. The son has designed a, a little bracket that will fit our situation, and I'm just trying to determine what, uh, how to build the frame. There's plenty of room to, to get on either side of the bed. Cobb and oven. Ellie's going to, going to help us out. Yay! I'm gonna go ahead and put a can light downstairs. What are you thinking right here? That looks good. Hey, Dad! Do hey, what? You come down here for a sec? Hey, what? Post a dollar, go bucks. There's this half mark here on this post, so I'm gonna put it right in the center. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. That'll be a nice light down here. Yeah, you found me! Good boy. The mirrors for down below that someone very kindly gave to us. Thank you, Pam. These are going to be awesome. Yeah, they're um, jet mirrors. How should I attach these things? That was. It's not like you would expect. It's actually soft. At the base of the stairs, we have this solar light. Nothing like seeing yourself everywhere. <laughs> I'm feeling like you're up there good enough, so we're good. Now we'll shut off lights and see how much brighter it is. Ready? Yeah. Oh, wow. That is a whole ton better. It's yeah, look, it's even, it's even reflecting off the wall. Perfect, we're done. This is gonna be for our Murphy bed. And we found uh, somebody who had a great design to make the frame in the box. And uh, today we put together the box, which was simple. We got a couple pieces of plywood and uh, nailed, or screwed, screwed and glued. Oh. This is the bottom piece, or actually the right side piece. It's gonna go up and to the right side, and it should fit right up here against the wall and be the right side of our Murphy bed. Hard to make a round cut with a straight saw. <laughs> We're gonna do the same thing that we did in my room, which is using these floor panels as ceiling panels inside of the base of the stairs. That's nice, it's like there's a light up there. That's really cool. Uh, we found a seat swivel for a, for a boat. It's a six inch plate with a nice swivel. And that's the main mechanism for both sides. This guy, and it'll sit about here. It will be functional. 
So these pieces are gonna need quite a bit of cleaning done to them. Just an L bracket really with a spring offset on the L bracket and then I guess the seat swivel will be offset as well. That way we'll get tension when the bed's coming down um, so it doesn't just fall. So that's gonna go. We're gonna get these two hinges installed and finish up the Murphy bed. Go. Oh, is your arm in there? <laughs> Not out. It's okay. So we just push the dogs. We don't need them, right? And the good thing is, is that if it's wrong, we just unscrew it and fix it. This is Looks bed okay. down. Yeah, and that's gonna go up. This is bed. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we need to get it up past this, so we're gonna have to just go through it. All right, bring it down, see what happens. And it counterweights it really nicely. It does. Yeah. Much easier. Right there, it's good. Okay, can I have a spring now? Let me yeah. jump out real fast, guys. How does that feel, bro? Here, let's go. Yeah, two of those bad boys. It was fun. There was a lot of, a lot of thinking that went into it. That's good. I like that. Okay. And then it turned out to be a lot simpler, which was, <laughs> which was really good. So it's just. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll be able to do that. We got the functionality, um, all the mechanical parts of this thing built. On um, the springs are in, the hinges are in. It's gonna work really good. Yeah. Hey, all right. The material for the ceiling arrives. We got some canvas here for the ceiling. Uh, well, not exactly canvas. 100 yards of burlap. There it is. We love the look of the reciprocal roof. It's got this cute little design. It's a shame to think that we might have to cover that up. So we started thinking about how could we do that where we could put stuff in between there. So we'll be able to see the design. We're gonna staple this up in between the boards so that we'll still have the boards showing and then we'll have little sections of burlap with the insulation underneath it. So we're hoping it's gonna work. And we're just doing the, uh, nothing more than just the little top part right here. That's my job while well, mom and Bryson have been putting up the burlap and the insulation. I have to stay ahead of them because we want it to be stained before we put it up there. Don't so tape it with a rag chase so it doesn't drip. Well, I'm gonna have a finish line to work towards. If we just set up the goal of finishing up the Muse Art Studio, it would be so overwhelming to be just- Miserable. <laughs> Yeah, so we set up small goals, which is what we did on the ceiling, and I think I got a little over ambitious on this one. Tuesday, there and there, Wednesday, and so on all the way up to the top. Today is Wednesday, which was supposed to be on this layer, and we're still on Tuesday, so we need to catch up. I think the kids thought it was a little ridiculous this time when I named the rows. Tuesday stuff. Now we're sitting at Thursday, and I don't know. It's still fun to have the goals and try to achieve them, you know, but mm -hmm. if we miss them, um, like in this case, there's a pretty good chance we're not going to make this one. But um, every once in a while, her goals get a little ambitious. And if they're just barely ambitious, typically us kids are like, oh, no, mom, no, this is where our but goal is. But if they're be extremely ambitious, we're just like, okay. Bryson, come here. I would like to brush your hair. Hmm. Actually, I think this is one what? time I'm just going to deny Bryson, your quest. Just lean. Just lean, would you? Eventually, mom's like, this was a giant goal. What's kind of fun about these projects is I really enjoy the time we, that we come out together as a family. Mm -hmm. We spend like an hour of our day where we're just all together working side by side. On this project now, we couldn't really all be out there together as a family mm -hmm. because we only have one staple gun. Well, we picked up this air gun for the job and Oh, it's so worth it. This is a good investment. As we just took turns working in pairs or three of us would go out at, at various times. It's some of the best ways to build relationships with each other, whether it's family or even friends. Sometimes I think that when you have to work with someone, it's even more of a test to that 
uh, friendship or relationship. Yeah, how are you keeping it up there? Watch this magic. I'm ready. Put up the cotton candy from hell. <laughs> so there's also, you just have to kind of build off each other a lot in a workspace and endanger someone sometimes when you're working. So you have to know where everyone's at and you have to communicate. And there's frustrating moments that you have to work out. A lot of compromising when it comes to ideas. It's a lot of middle ground. It's like, oh, okay, let's, let's compromise here. That'd be one way to learn. Bryson, he has been printing these little dragon heads. We're gonna use them like, uh, well, just like this in the Muse Art Studio with cabinet door handles. So we ordered some black plastic online to replace the pink knobs that are on the cabinets now. Hi, right, buddy. Come on. Okay. So we started out printing on Garen's printer because my printer was broken down at the time. It's finished. Bring it over. Kind of like a frog. It just needs to have all the support stuff taken off. Oh, from it's the cute, bottom. isn't it? Yeah, it's very cute. Gosh, it's just silky, beautiful. We supposedly keep our hands safe, but I don't want to smash this or ruin this. Take a drill bit, and I was showing you how to drill the holes into the back of them. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna go get the old knobs. Actually, let me get a, let me get a screw here and see if I can take these. I'm not in my pajamas. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. It's not easy. Maybe if I held it on this side. Use the same method that the other knobs did, where it, the screw just simply screws into the back of them. First one's done. Look at that. from ears. Sure's a process though. <laughs> Looking good, Shay. So our original number is 12, but we may end up printing more depending on how many cabinets Dad puts in. We may put print some larger ones for the Murphy bed. I'm gonna keep all my fabrics in here. Keep some of my equipment in here. Oh yeah. Wow, you're poking away on this. We ran out. <laughs> so, we'll have to finish this up later. You know, one of the things that's always with every project is how do we get enough time to do all the things that we need to do. And I travel for work sometimes, so it requires me to be out of town for three, four, sometimes five days. You know, it, it's frustrating knowing that everybody's here at the house working real hard like they're working on the ceiling. I'd really long to be with them too and be there. When I am away, it's really reassuring to know that Bryson and Garen are here. To just be here, part of the family, kind of upholding that I know that both boys really step up to the plate when dad's gone. And I'm just like, oh, okay, good. So I feel better on the inside. These are the spindles for the uh, headboard. Dry out a little. It's so cool to come back and be able to, you know, play here and create and, and have a lot of fun. That's, that to me is like one of the coolest things about what we're doing here. <laughs> I really like the stain that dad's putting on. Oh, I didn't even see the railing. Wow, that looks so cool. We are driving towards the goal of completing the underground Muse Art Studio with several finishing touches still needed to be completed. The family heads downstairs to see what's next. Ooh, it's oh. really dark in here. The gap between the ceiling and the wall still needs to be filled. Okay, this looks really ridiculous. 
But we did this on Bryson's room to go between the ceiling and the wall. And we can, um, we'll trim it off and paint it purple and it will actually look half adhesive. I do this spray foam stuff. I do not <laughs> take responsibility for my foliage. Peace out. Troublemakers. <laughs> you want a different color? This is where dad supposedly fell through. Yeah. Yeah, he says how he fell through all the time, but he really just stepped. That's it. A small it's really dramatic. Step. What we're gonna do is this white piece may not work. Should I cut it out just like exactly like he fell out in it? Mm. <laughs> and then, uh, I think we should just put a band-aid on it and have dad sign this it. This piece won't work. <laughs> okay. Get a tape measure, okay. measure that distance and you see tape if measure? we have it. No, it's upstairs. Can you put some away and lock? Maybe. Maybe you put it in the house. With so many of us working, we're always misplacing the tape measure. Where's your right sense of adventure, Bryson? I know, gosh. It's just so unfun. Well, we only have so many of these, so let's be a little careful while we do it. Here, look, can I cut it? Yeah, please do. Actually, Mom, I think we were both all right. All right, so make us proud. Take this. Okay. We're just gonna try to trim this off to make it look like it's kind of part of the wall. It just has to look like it's part of that stucco wall. And then Shay will come back and paint it with the purple, and then it will uh, kind of blend in a little bit better and they'll uh, show them that gap. <laughs> I slipped and kind of tripped and did that. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. It's like my... Uh, Signature? Yeah. I don't have a light though down here. Ready? Yeah. So I wired up the fans so that they'll work off of just a normal plug-in, mainly because we just wanted to test them and we needed to get some airflow down there. And they're working great. Oh yeah, I can feel it. There, it's already changing temperature in here. Bryson and I, we were on the electrical for the building. We started on like all the outlets, got all them in, and we banged that out pretty quick actually. Yeah, we did. Where's the tape measure? I need tape measure. And getting the height of the light is the challenge part. They all are a little different. I need a tape measure. What are you, <laughs> what are you wearing? Aunt Army pants, flip flops, and. Isn't that kind of uncomfortable with that in your toe like that? Very comfortable. Mm, yeah. <laughs> are you filming me? <laughs> what are you doing? Putting in a light. <laughs> can lights were already in, right? The so can lights were already in, and then we just put the caps. We got light bulbs. This is the unboxing and drop test of. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tested. Oh, sweet. Oh, Ooh, cool. I'm so much faster than you. What's this, Bryson? Why are you messing me up? I'm not messing you up. You said you could do it faster. I'm counting. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Are you serious? Yes, I am serious. Who went in a light bulb, Ryan? Right? All right, I'm going to go plug it in. Okay, let's see if everything works. The testing at the end was that everything that worked, worked, which was see that that's so cool, important and good. It means we did it right. <laughs> All right, that looks have... so cool. Let's Here go case. downstairs, Bree. Check it out. Where's the switch? All right. Let's see that fan. <gasps> really light this room up pretty good. Yeah, it does. It looks great, guys. It's wonderful work. I home from work today and I'm so excited. Uh, the boys went ahead and got all the electrical hooked up. Uh, it's all working so good. So I'm very excited, they did a great job. The last thing needed for this building project is the floors. You too, sir. 
our burlap came, so we'll be able to finish that. And look over here too, our flooring material. So we are ready to go. Woo! <laughs> So, Shay, what are you doing? I'm just cleaning the steps so that we can um, fill in the holes and chisel off the excess little weird things. Is you go? Yeah, I got this one. This is Marvin. He's back. What are you guys up to this today, Ben? We're uh, trying to get some pad laid down. Marvin has graciously donated some carpet. We took it right out of his house, so they don't have any carpet in that room now. He said he could do without for a few months. No big deal. I like perfect. I think. Well, it looks yep. good. It looks good all the way down. Got the little scragglers, huh? It's like it's like silent in here. Food doesn't come up. And then right. I'm gonna get the iron out. That one single piece almost covered the whole thing. Yeah. I get to mess up if we mess up. Yeah. I do kind of like the red tint. I think I do too. I like that can a I lot. Much approval, Mom. Do you want well, me to sweep it for you and then you come back through and paint it? Um, yeah. I would like to make a point that Mom has started painting at the top of the steps, which is clearly a wise decision when there is no other exit. I'm only gonna do half down and half back up. No. You just, you got this figured out. <gasps> Obviously I don't. Let's get some new blades on our tools. Gary has this idea to put foam floor on the upstairs floor. What they look like? Ooh. And I didn't want a big gray floor up there. I like the foam idea. Yeah. To our surprise, we found out that they made foam in patterns. Ooh. Three quarter inch plank. And the only place we're going to use the straight edge is in front of the door. Yeah, everything else is cut. Alright, let's bring it over. Let's get started. Once we get this first layer down, we can all just get going on it. Through eBay, we found our best price, and they had a, a marble pattern. I would have preferred that, but that was, for whatever reason, was a lot higher price. So we just went with the lightest flooring that we could find. I don't think we want to glue these down at all, like around the edges. I don't think so. We can always do it if we need to. Michelle, you should come up. Yeah, yeah, come up and look. You're gonna like it. Oh, I love it. Now, wow, gonna... they're big. I, I I don't know why I was, I didn't realize they're so big. They're fun to have underneath your feet, though. There's a top hard plastic coating to the top of this. It's not like foam. So, this floor is gonna clean up real nice. When it's laid there, I thought it would look really corny, but I thought, well, at least it'd be patterned and easy to clean, and it's got the foam, and it's not gray. Can we get a drill, too, and we'll open up our thing and kind of see where we need to cut. Probably gonna build the square trim dad right on the inside of here. And just start, start laying them down. Okay. So I'll clear the ends off and set them there. So. I think out of all, all the jobs that we've done on this building so far, this one's my favorite. Maybe it's because of like, I just cut this one in wrong. Grains of the wood is Oh, wrong grains way. of the wood. Oh, that's okay. Well, it's gonna be because... Yeah, you, we're not gonna notice. It's so I'm gonna notice. That's really OCD cry cry, dude. Oh, I'm actually, having a heart attack. Oh. It's singing off key. That's well, basically what this is like. You know what the cool thing about someone singing off key is? What? It makes you realize how good the people singing on key are. Yeah, it also makes you lament that that one person is in the choir. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, 
I love it. To my surprise, it's um, it actually looks really. I looks like. really good. It has a vinyl top on it, so you can kind of clean it off when you need to. And so that's the nice thing is that you can walk on it and clean it. it sweeps up nice. I mean, not very expensive. I and mean, we think too is if one gets ruined, you just replace it with another. Yeah, I don't know how you know how long it will last and how well it will hold up, but I guess we'll see. Let's give it a try. That's what we're about. Dude, this is so cool. Not too much left. No, we got to trim around those. Notice these and, and and those. I've been cutting some metal here, getting ready to create the brackets that are going to hold the perfect bed up. They're just getting fabricated now, it'll get cleaned up, and, and then the bracket will go from here over, and then uh, we'll tie them together and put them on. It's amazing. Works good. Yeah. This is comfy. Notice how the crossbar is in wood. Yeah, Dad likes it a lot better than metal. Oh no. Yep. Dad is gonna be really mad at himself. Push. Did a boo boo. Can you fix it, Bri? We won't even tell him. Use our studio. Let's go take a look around. Welcome to my Use Art Studio. <laughs> right. Shake, would you like to show off your corner? Technically, this is my work area and that is my work area, but we like to say that it's everyone's work area, but this one's specifically designated to moi. You sure that's not the boyfriend uh, communication station? Boyfriend <laughs> HQ. That boyfriend one. headquarters, right here. <laughs> This is the rocket stove here that Che and Dad designed and put together. And this baby's gonna keep us warm during the winter times. We have a vent. We can vent to people now. Things. Just why? Oh, that's 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 that I can vent like on it, right? We don't even need it's my therapist crazy. anymore. <laughs> this is our Murphy bed. Our cousin Ashton was actually the first one to sleep in the Murphy bed. Sleep good. Okay. Let's rock and roll downstairs to the studio part of the studio. You'll actually probably notice the sound difference from upstairs to here. So we're still putting in furniture. Shoot. And now we do the Hopefully. narrating. Our muse art studio. We begin by Smooth downstairs. Of Can't get enough of my buttery voice. voice. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Here we go. What are you doing? I'm just showing how beautiful you guys look in this light. Well, I can't always count on that light. <laughs> is there anything else? Look at this. This is our most beautiful editor in the world. Our most beautiful mom. Give me the camera, My little please. mom. Thank you, that was delightful. <laughs> Where's the big screen TV in the refrigerator? This is not a guy den. I thought man it was cave? a man cave. Oh, that's what it is, a man cave. <laughs> 
is it has this olden artistic feel to it. I love the curtains and the colored bottles. I love being in here, yes. I just really like it. And just the skylight at top, just a beautiful oh. look. It still has that modern feel though. It's, it's yeah. creative and fun. It's the purpose of this building, to have a place where we can think creatively and a place to work. You don't really realize how huge this building is. It's bigger on the inside. I didn't make a Doctor Who reference, what? All right, so let's go outside. Collects light and reflects it on the inside at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, and here's a little bit of cob on our window. And then we installed a, a little bit of a patio here in front of the, actually it's an entryway ramp. it up for this building. Put it on repeat. <laughs> Put it on replay. You can wash all your dishes to it. Thanks so much for being here. Bye! See ya. Our family moved from the city to the country. Thanks for taking part in our adventure. We have new videos every Friday evening. If you would like to help us out, you can like this video, share it, subscribe, or support us on Patreon. See the links in the description. Please consider supporting us on Patreon.